Hey everyone, Harry here to talk about the charges of involuntary manslaughter against Alec Baldwin in Santa Fe, New Mexico, which were not brought yesterday, but for some reason, and it's part of the funkiness of the overall case, the DA went on a kind of uh, publicity charge, spelling them all out explaining why she was going to charge. They will, they will be charging Baldwin by the end of the month. All right, quick review. So a somewhat of a low-budget film. Baldwin is both a star, a kind of grizzled, old, um, you know, Western type, and, um, and a producer, one of uh, four top-line producers. I'll get into that in a moment. Uh, there's reports that things are very unsafe on the set, um, and, th and things are kind of sloppy. Uh, crew members quit, but I don't think it's about the safety if you read carefully. They're like upset about the food <laughs> and stuff like that. Uh, and then you have this absolute tragic event where Baldwin, uh, has to handle a gun. The armorer, a special role on a film that uses a gun, check, you know, has to check it, make sure it is quote unquote cold, that there's no live ammo in, does so. That person hands it to the first assistant director who is really kind of running the set. It's not, not really assisting the, the director, but, um, uh, kind of taking charge of things. And that person hands it to Baldwin. Baldwin uh, picks it up, and there's a little bit of a dispute now. Baldwin says he never pulls the trigger, but just cocks the cock, and um, the FBI does an independent search suggesting that the trigger was pulled. I think we can assume that it was. I don't think it really matters. Gun discharges and hits the chest of the cinematographer, um, who dies. So terrible gut wrenching, uh, episode. They've since had some civil litigation that was settled. Uh, and now yesterday the DA announces the charges and they charge Baldwin, uh, as well as the, the two others with, um, involuntary manslaughter. One has already pleaded. Let me, let me cut to the chase for me. Unfair overcharging. It's wrong and an overreach to have uh, stuck this on um, Baldwin. Here's why. There is involuntary manslaughter under New Mexico law, uh, like anywhere else. And indeed, there are sort of two different ways to prove it, as in most places involving whether or not they can prove that he was in the process of committing a, another crime. They may try to show that the he was negligently handling the gun, which is a misdemeanor. It doesn't matter. Under the law in New Mexico, it's quite clear. In either theory, they need to show criminal negligence. And I think this is where everyone is going awry. You're hearing from a lot of gun users. It doesn't matter. Everyone knows the very first thing you do when you pick up a gun is you check for the ammo. Everyone knows you never point it at, at anyone, et cetera, et cetera. And everyone may well know that that's how you use a gun if you're a gun user. An actor is not a gun user. And there's going to be a torrent of expert inf uh, uh, testimony in this case of people coming in saying, a armorer says a, a gun is cold. The first assistant director hands it to you. That's it. You do not go and look in the gun. It's not even clear. I mean, would Baldwin know the difference between live ammo and blanks? Uh, and by the way, this is an aside, but what the, how did live ammo ever get in there with something, you know, pernicious or sabotage? We will probably never know. But the basic thing that the prosecution has to prove for criminal negligence, which sounds like kind of negligence plus a little, it isn't. It's a really different standard. And it is that Baldwin was grossly deviating from the standard of care that a reasonable person in his shoes would have exercised. That means an actor on a set. And we've already had the Screen Actors Guild and others come out and say, 
you know, this is actors on the set are are not charged with doing this. They get the gun, they shoot the, the gun. I actually, in my youth, uh, my first few jobs and a couple years out of college was working in movies in New York on sets. And I can really attest to this. The, um, you know, I, I, an actor doesn't just stop in the middle and do the kind of gun checks that a gun user would um, undertake. You, you take the gun and you shoot it. Now, a lot of people, another thing they're saying is, hey, he was a producer and he was a producer, but but that's that's another red herring. Because first, the DA is making very clear that she's charging him as an actor. This applies even to A-list actors, she says. And also, there are producers, anyone who works in movies will tell you, there are producers and there are producers. These four producers like Baldwin, basically they're lending their name to the production. They're going to make more money from it. They are not, repeat not, the people who hire the armorer, much less uh, insure on a day-to-day level that they're doing their job right, et cetera. It's much higher level than that. So really, there's not, there's no way in which a producer's uh, would be uh, grossly departing from a reasonable standard of care of someone in their shoes by not, you know, triple checking um, uh, the gun. The DA, but who's making a lot of public statements, and I think uh, the, the charges haven't even been brought, and is flirting, in fact, with ethical violations under the the, the rules that apply in New Mexico around the the country. You're only allowed to make public statements if they really further a law enforcement purpose. Actually came out and told the New York Times that Baldwin has an absolute duty of care. Let me get it right. An absolute duty to know what is in the gun that is being placed in his hand is safe. You know, that sounds good. And maybe some gun users would say it. As a statement of the law, it is bogus. No, he doesn't have an absolute duty. They need to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that he grossly deviated from the standard of care a reasonable person would exercise. And then she also said, if if it weren't for the conduct of three people, this tragedy wouldn't have happened. That's a but-for causation standard, yeah, but completely, again, irrelevant to involuntary manslaughter and the question of criminal negligence and whether Baldwin, Baldwin as an actor or a producer, again, grossly deviated from the standard of care. If this goes to trial, and I, you know, he's certainly not going to plead, you're going to have a parade of pretty uh, well-known people to come in the court and say, you know, I don't do this. We don't do this. This is not how it works on movie sets. And the people who are very quick to say, you know, bravo, to the um, the DA um, are talking about how what gun users are supposed to do and the like. There's also this whole possibility: Baldwin, a big lib, does Donald Trump nastily on SNL? This is a you know Republican district and a Republican DA, et cetera. Let's just ignore that um, for now, but and credit that it's in good faith because they think does the DA in the way that a lot of citizens do. That was bad. He shouldn't have done it. It's a criminal case. It's uh, seeking to take away a person's liberty. You have to prove it beyond a reasonable doubt. And what you have to prove is a deviation from a standard that a normal actor, someone in, in Baldwin's shoes, would use. I just don't see how they get there. I don't see how they concluded they could, which which is a whole problem in itself because you're not allowed to bring charges that you, you haven't concluded or you're likely to win. Okay, so this is all happening, you know, in the last 24 hours. Not sure where other people are on this. I feel as a former prosecutor, maybe I'm particularly dogmatic about this, but it strikes me as a miscarriage of justice and as a kind of making a whipping boy an example of Alec uh, Baldwin. There's a lot of stray statements like we show that the law applies to everyone, even A-list actors. Very nice idea if the law, as properly interpreted, really uh, does. It seems to me they're, you know, using him to make an example out of him. Or we really want to make sure that the that sets are safe. Great idea. Terrific. Not how you use the criminal law. So 
not to make too fine a point of it, but I think it's overcharge and a miscarriage of justice. We'll see what the next few weeks hold. Uh, presumably, uh, Baldwin has a high-powered legal team that will be able to press the, the points on his behalf better than I can. And, uh, and you know, we'll, we'll see uh, if and when the DA's case kind of folds up. Of course, always a risk when you go to a jury that even if the evidence isn't there, the jury will, will find it. So he is really in jeopardy, I think unfairly. All righty. So there you have it. We'll, we'll see how this continues to play out. Um, hey, you might want to go to our Patreon site. We just yesterday had the monthly Q&A that supporters are able to do. And it's just a good way to, we're completely independent media, a good way to support us if the spirit moves you. But on Rust and Baldwin, it ain't done yet. We'll, we'll have uh, chapters coming as soon as the charges are actually filed at the end of the month. Until then, talk to you later. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video and other Talking Feds content, please take a second to like and subscribe. Talk to you later.